All right, you guys, uh, today we are looking at the other type of special right triangle, so a 30, 60, 90 triangle, as well as area of regular polygons. So first up, when I'm looking at a 30, 60, 90 triangle, I have two legs. We call one of the legs the short leg. So right here, it's opposite the smaller angle, right? The smallest angle of the bunch. So short leg right here, we call that X. Again, I'm just going to say short leg. Okay, we have a longer leg. So longer of the two, opposite the 60 degree angle. So our longer leg is X root 3. And then our hypotenuse, the longest side opposite the biggest angle, the 90 degree angle, that is 2x. Any 30, 60, 90 triangle will be similar to any other 30, 60, 90 triangle. Similar means that we have the same shape, but just different sizes. So we're scaling something up, we're enlarging it, or we're shrinking something down. We are compressing it, shrinking, reducing. We use all those words. So we know that our, our angles for any similar shape, our angles will always match. The corresponding angles will be congruent, but the corresponding sides, they are proportional, same ratio. And that's how we get to this pattern. So again, my short leg opposite the 30 is X, longer leg opposite the 60 is X root three, and the hypotenuse opposite the right angle is two times X. So if I start at the short leg, for example, and I'm trying to go to the longer leg, Right. All I'm doing is I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3. Right. If I was going short leg to hypotenuse, I just multiply by 2. Let's say that I'm going in reverse. Let's say that I'm going from the longer leg to the short leg. Well, then all I'm doing here, longer leg to short leg, I'm dividing by the square root of three. And then in the process, I have to rationalize the denominator. All right, so my first example here, I'm giving you the first two, I'm giving you the short leg. Before I do anything, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mark the different sides for the entire row. So my short leg, right opposite the 30 degree angle, is X. The longer leg is X root 3. So opposite the 60 is X root 3. And then the hypotenuse opposite the 90 is the 2x. All right, so I have all of my labels first and foremost. And now I'm going to find my missing sides. So if my short leg is 18, my longer leg is 18 root 3. My hypotenuse is 2 times 18, so 36. Okay, my next one, I'm starting with the leg, the short leg first as well. I know what X is. So if I want the longer leg, I'm taking 18 root 2 and I'm multiplying by root 3. So I get 18 root 6. And then for my hypotenuse, I'm taking 18 root 2 and I'm doubling it to get 36 root 2. 
Okay, here in my next example for C, my starting point is no longer the short leg, it's the hypotenuse. So my hypotenuse is 2x, right? It's 2 times the short leg. So if I want x, I just have to divide 18 by 2. So x, the short leg would be 9. And then once I have that short leg, if I multiply by root 3, my longer leg is 9 root 3. All right, next row, same deal. Let me slide this up. All right, so first things first, I'm going to label all of my sides. So my short leg is x opposite my 30, right? The short leg is x. The longer leg opposite the 60 is x root 3. And then the hypotenuse, the longest side opposite the right angle, is 2x. Okay, so now looking at the first one, I'm again giving you the hypotenuse to start. I know that the hypotenuse is 2 times the short leg. So if I take 18 root 2 and I split that in half, I get a short leg here of 9 root 2. Okay, my longer leg, x root 3, right, I'm taking the 9 root 2 and multiplying by root 3. So root 2 times root 3 is root 6. I end up with 9 root 6. Okay, next problem looking over at E. Here I'm giving you the longer leg, and it's 18. I know that's my x root 3 side. So ultimately, I'm taking the 18, I'm dividing by the square root of 3, and then I'm rationalizing. So to show you that process, here I have x root 3 equivalent to 18. Okay, I'm going to divide each side by the square root of 3. And then I'm going to rationalize. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3 over itself. And I get 18 root 3 divided by 3. And that gets me 6 root 3. So my short leg is 6 root 3. If I double it, I can get to my hypotenuse, which would then be 12 root Three. Okay, one thing to point out in terms of mechanics, if I know this leg, the long leg, is 18, when I'm trying to solve for the short leg, and I know that this is the x root 3 side, in terms of the skill, right, I'm dividing by the square root of 3, and then I'm multiplying by root 3 over root 3. Right? I'm multiplying by 1. Anything over itself is 1, so it preserves the ratio. So I'm really taking a third of the original value and then multiplying by the square root of 3. So if I take a third of 18, that's 6, multiplied by root 3, I'm at 6 root 3 faster. Imagine for a moment that this long leg is 12. Take a third of 12 and multiply by root 3. This side would be 4 root 3. Let's try it one more time. Let's say that the long leg was 21. Take a third of 21, that is 7, times root 3. This short leg would be 7 root 3. So I'm just pointing out a shortcut in terms of the mechanics. If you know that longer leg, take a third of it, multiply by the square root of 3, and you now have your short leg. So if I test that out here, if I take a third of 18 root 2, that would be 6 root 2. Multiplied by root 3, I should get 6 root 6 here. And then double it to get to the hypotenuse, I would have 12 root 6. Let me double check that. So here again, my x root 3 side is stated as 18 root 2. Okay, divide each side by the square root of 3. 
rationalize, which means we're multiplying by root 3 over itself, right? We're multiplying by 1. And now on top, I have 18 root 6 divided by 3. And there's my 6 root 6. Okay, so it doesn't matter to me which way you solve it. I'm just pointing out that in the mechanics of the skill, we're really taking a third of the original value and then multiplying by the square root of 3. All right, this last row, I'd like you to pause the video, and I want you to try these final three on your own. And then when you're ready, unpause, and I'm going to go over them with you. All right, here we go. So I'm going to start by labeling all of my sides. So my short leg is x, always opposite the smallest angle. So smallest angle, smallest side, right? They're opposite each other. Longer leg opposite the 60, x root 3. Hypotenuse is 2x. Always the longest side, always opposite the right angle. All right, so in G, I'm giving you the short leg. So the longer leg will be 30 root 3. Okay, the hypotenuse, if I double the 30, I get 60. Okay, next one, I'm giving you the hypotenuse, 30. So cut it in half to get the short leg, 15. Multiply 15 by root 3, and I get 15 root 3 for the long leg. Okay, last one here, I'm giving you that longer leg. The x root 3 is 30. If you follow my shortcut, take a third of 30 and multiply by root 3. That would be 10 root 3. And then double to get to the hypotenuse of 20 root 3. Okay, let's say that you don't understand the shortcut, or at least you don't yet. Build an equation. So x root 3 equals 30. Okay, divide each side by the square root of 3. Rationalize, so multiply by root 3 over root 3. Now we have 30 root 3 divided by 3. And it confirms the 10 root 3, right? Because we take that original figure of 30, we take a third of it, and then multiply by the square root of 3. All right, flip it over. Let's look at the back. So on the back, what I'm doing is I'm giving you some of these compound special right triangle problems to start. So we see that we have two special right triangles. They share a common side, right? That common side is right here. So we're trying to build off the information that is given to then get to the measure that is wanted. So a good strategy is to split your figure up into two separate triangles. So I'm just going to go ahead and redraw them as two separate entities. And I can see that one is a 45-45-90 triangle, and the other is a 30-60-90 triangle. I have to build off of the part that's marked. So I have to build off of the triangle on the right. So if I label my sides, my short leg is x, my long leg is x root 3, my hypotenuse is 2x. So if 14 is my hypotenuse, my short leg will be 7, and then the long leg will be 7 root 3. So remember that that 7 root 3 here is the same as here, right? That's a shared side. Over here, I marked that in red. So that means that this side right here is also 7 root 3. So now when I look at my triangle on the left, a 45, 45, 90, my two legs are x, and my hypotenuse is x root 2. So my hypotenuse, what I ultimately want, a, is 7 root 3 times root 2 which gets me 7 root 
6. So ultimately, A has a measure of 7 root 6. I just had to connect the dots to get to that conclusion. All right, my next one is the same, right? And we see that it's a, a compound problem. We have two special right triangles. They share a common side, and that common side is right here. All right, so let me draw them separated. So I have this small 30, 60, 90 triangle. And then here I see the larger one, where here's my 60 and here's my 30. I know that this is C and this is 12. So if I start with the figure where I have a side marked here, I have to start with this one. I'm going to label my sides. Short leg is x, longer leg is x root 3, hypotenuse is 2x. So my longer leg is 12, right? That's the x root 3 side. So if I divide by root 3 and rationalize, it's the same thing as taking a third of the 12 and then multiplying by the square root of 3. So I end up with 4 root 3. I'm going to take the shortcut here. So that side is 4 root 3. Remember that this side right here is the same as this side right here. That's the shared side. I see that right here in red. So right here, I have 4 root 3 as well. So now, looking at the triangle on the left, the short leg is x, the longer leg is x root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2x. So if 2x right now is 4 root 3, then x would be 2 root 3. And then if I multiply 2 root 3 by root 3, that's like saying 2 times 3, and that gets me 6. So the measure of c ends up being 6. Okay, lastly, I want to look at area of re any regular polygon with a focus today on the types of regular polygons that have a special right triangle built within. So what I've drawn for you for the model is a regular pentagon, but it's re meant to represent any regular polygon. So if we call something regular, that just means that we have all sides congruent and all interior angles congruent as well. So what I've drawn from my model so far is I've, I have all of the sides marked with a single tick mark. And then here, if this is the center of my regular polygon, I've drawn in each radius. So I'm connecting the center to each vertex. Each radius is congruent to any other radius, so I'm going to give everything here a double tick mark. Okay, so first I'm pointing out that any n-sided regular polygon can be divided into n congruent isosceles triangles. So you can see that what we have here for the regular pentagon is that we have five of them, right? Five sides we have five congruent isosceles triangles. Okay, each altitude of a triangle from the center is an apothem. I know that there is different pronunciation depending on where you, uh, where you look. Uh, the way that I learned it, the way that our textbook pronounces it, apothem. So let me say that one more time, apothem. All right, so the apothem is the altitude of a triangle from the center. So let me draw it in right here in purple. So in purple, this is my apothem. A-pa-thum. All right, I'm just writing out how you pronounce it, apothem. All right, so that's my apothem. So I see that really the apothem is the height of one of those isosceles triangles. Okay, right here would be a side. Okay, 
and then my radius right here right connects the center to a vertex Okay, so how all of those pieces relate, let me just slide that over, is you can see that if I look at one of those triangles, let me draw out just one of them to start off with, right? I'm looking at this one right here. I'm looking at this triangle right there. Let me highlight it to emphasize. It's one of five that are perfectly congruent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw my picture as a strip of five congruent isosceles triangles. Okay, so my apothumb is the height of each of these triangles. And then their collective bases, so all of these bases, all these sides added up, end up being the total perimeter. It's simply the sum of all of the sides. So if I'm trying to get the area of a regular polygon, I'm really looking at one of those triangles and then I can multiply by however many triangles I have, right? Another way of visualizing that is to say one half the collective bases times the shared height. So one half the apothumb times the perimeter. And that would get us the area for any regular polygon. But like I said today, we're gonna emphasize all of the ones that have a special right triangle built in. All right, so first I'm looking at an equilateral triangle. So we know that that means that all three sides are the same. All of the angles are as well. So here what I've done is I've drawn in the apothumb and the radius. I'm going to label the apothumb with an A and the radius with an R and then point out that right here this is half of a side with a right angle right there. Okay, so I'm just helping you visualize those three congruent isosceles triangles, right? I could give little tick marks to show that as well. Okay, so I'm really splitting this one right down the middle, and I'm looking at that right triangle right here. Okay, if I put in the angles, all of the angles start at 60. So if I split this one in half, I have a 30 degree angle, and then 60 degree right here. Okay, if I look at my square, Right here, I've shown you those four isosceles triangles. Let me add in those tick marks. And then I'm just splitting this one right down the middle and looking at one of those triangles. So here I know again, apothumb is here, radius is here. Apothumb connects a center to a side. Radius connects a center to a vertex. We draw in that right angle and acknowledge that this right here is half of a side. For any square, all of the angles start at 90. So here, this one bisected would be 45, and then 45 degrees here as well. So we see, oh, we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle built in. Okay, lastly is the regular hexagon. What happens with the regular hexagon is unique. For a regular hexagon, we end up having a side that is the same as a radius. So a side is equal to a radius. And the reason that is, is because it splits into six congruent equilateral triangles. So instead of giving a double tick mark for each radius, each one can get a single tick mark as I work my way around like that. All right, so here, again, here's my apothumb, here's my radius, here is half of a side. Each of the interior angles for any regular hexagon 
if I go back to that n minus 2 times 180 divided by n formula, the sum of all the angles has to be 720, split it six ways. Each interior angle would be 120. So if I split this one in half, I have a 60 degree here and a 30 degree here. And there's my right angle in that slot as well. So again, we're looking at the three shapes that have a special right triangle built in. So our equilateral triangle has a 30, 60, 90. A square has a 45, 45, 90. And the hexagon has, is a 30, 60, 90 as well, but it has a different orientation than we saw over here. All right, so we're going to close out with, can you find the area of each regular polygon? So right now I have to think of, well, what am I given? So in A, I'm given the apothem. I'm going to go ahead and draw in a radius as well, and then mark that right angle. Again, if each of these angles starts out at 60, split it two ways. My 30 degree is here, and here is my 60. Here's my 30, 60, 90 triangle built in. So I know that my short leg is x, my long leg is x root 3, my hypotenuse is 2x. Okay, I'm going after the area, so I'm just going to write off to the side, area is 1 half the apothem times the perimeter. I already know my apothem is 12, so it's my perimeter that I need to get, and right here, this would be half of a side. So if my short leg is 12, then my long leg would be 12 root 3. So again, that's half of a side. So a full side would be 24 root 3. And then my perimeter, I have three sides. They're all the same, and they're all 24 root 3. So my perimeter would be 72 root 3. So now if I'm calculating area, Area would be 1 half, the apothem is 12th, the perimeter is 72 root 3. And I can multiply in whatever order I want. So I probably take half of the 12th, that's 6. 6 times 72 is 432. So 432 root 3 units squared. So you should be able to calculate area for an equilateral triangle if I start you with the apothem, with the radius, with a side, with a perimeter, right? Any starting point, you should be able to get to the overall area. Okay, next, looking at the square, here I'm giving you a radius. So let me draw in the apothem. Okay, this 90 degree angle is being split into two parts. So 45 degrees and 45 degrees. This other angle would be 45 degrees as well. So I have a couple of ways I can solve this. I can solve it using that new formula, right? I could do one half the apothem times the perimeter, right? That is an option, that is fine. Uh, I could also do base times height or just call that a side squared, that would be fine. But the other formula that we covered in class just the other day is we could also go through the diagonals. I can also do one half diagonal one times diagonal two. We went over this very specifically for a rhombus, and then just remember that a square is a type of rhombus, so it shares that, it, that um, formula as well. So it's a matter of what's easiest, right? If I see that this is a 45, 45, 90, right, I know that my two legs are x and the hypotenuse is x root two. So if I want to use my new formula, then right here the apothem is 6 root 2. Okay, half a side is 6 root 2 also, which means, again, that was half of a side, which means that a full side would then be 12 root 2. And then the perimeter, I have four of those sides. I have 48 then root 2. Okay, that's my perimeter. So if I go that first path, if I do 1 half AP, let me just write that out down here. So area is one half apothem times perimeter. Then I'm plugging in an apothem that's six root two with a perimeter that's 48 root two. That's like saying half of six 
times 48 times 2. So if I multiply half of 6, that's 3. Uh, 3 times 48 and then times 2, and I'm going to get 288 units squared. That's fine, right? I don't think that's actually the easiest way, though. Let me point out the easiest way. If I had gone through the diagonals instead here, that full diagonal, right, this part would be 12 also, so the full diagonal would have been 24. So I think I could have gotten there faster if I had done half of diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. I want to confirm that I'm going to get the same answer. So for a square, the diagonals are always the same. So my diagonals here would both be 24. So half of 24, 12 times the other 24, and I'm back to 288. So the square brings a little flexibility. We have some options for how we get to the end result. Doesn't matter to me. We have a whole slew of formulas that get us to the same final answer in terms of area. All right, lastly here, a regular hexagon, and I'm giving you a radius. So let me draw in the apothem. Okay, if I label my angles, right, each of these angles is 120. Split it in half, and here is my 60, and here is my 30 degree angle. Okay, label the sides. The short leg is x. The long leg is x root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2x. So here I can see then that my, my short leg here is half of 12. It's 6. From here to here, that's 6. And then the apothem is 6 root 3. So in terms of formula, here I'm going to go through 1 half apothem times perimeter. I already know that my apothem is 6 root 3. So now I need to figure out, well, what's my full perimeter? So right now, if half of a side is 6, then a full side is 12. And then my perimeter, I have 6 sides that are all 12. So my perimeter is 72. So I have my apothem, and I have my perimeter also. So working through, I have half of 6 root 3 times 72. So I'd say, well, what's half of 6? 3 times 72, and I'm at 216. So 216 root 3, and then units squared. All right, so again, our big takeaway from today is just learning the other special right triangle, the 30, 60, 90 pattern, um, and then extending it to area of regular polygons. So looking at an equilateral triangle, a square, and a regular hexagon, all of them have a special right triangle built in that makes it easier to calculate the overall area. If we're talking about any regular polygon, we can use the one-half apothem times perimeter if we know all of those details. All right, that's all I have for today. Have a good rest of your day.